Good morning, everyone. I'm Dean Kovacic. I'm uh, with the University of Zagreb, Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computing, uh, uh, Department of Electronic Systems and Information Processing. And my talk will be about energy efficient atmospheric carbon monoxide concentration sensing with on demand operating metal oxide gas sensor. So I'll start with the introduction. Uh, what's our use case? Uh, what are we using? Uh, metal oxide gas sensors for. Uh, currently we are working uh, on a, a project dealing with uh, collaborative uh, air quality sensing in the urban spaces using uh, personal mobile gas sensors. So typically in such a scenario having a large number of small and portable sensors roaming around the town, either carried by the pedestrians or mounted to a public transport. Such sensors would be transferring the information typically to the user's mobile phones into the system. And a uh, typical uh, scenario is that the system itself uh, orchestrates the sampling instance of the each particular sensor in the network. So typically, each of the sensor uh, spends uh, most of the time in its sleep, then it is woken up by the system, does the measurements, sends the measurements, goes back to sleep, and needs to be able to sleep for, in, 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 uh, uh, in some general case, for an indefinite amount of time, do the precise measurement, and also be, be able to do the successive measurements in, in a row if this is needed from the system. So this is one of the requirements. The other requir requirements are as typical. So we need a stable sensor response with no drift. We need a high sensitivity because we're measuring atmospheric concentrations of typical carbon monoxide in these applications, which is quite low in the order of magnitude about one ppm being a bit more than uh, one microgram per uh, cubic meter. And also we need a uh, low power operation as these devices are portable. And uh, with this, we come uh, to the choice of the sensors which we would be using. Our typical choices are either the uh, electrochemical sensors, so we've got devices implemented using this technology, and on the other hand, uh, we pose a question if is it feasible to produce us such a devices op operating in such a scenario which I described before using the metal oxide sensors. So, what we did have at hand is our, uh, our were some uh, off-the-shelf uh, uh, metal oxide sensors. In particular, we use the Mix uh, uh, 5525 carbon monoxide MOX sensor from uh, SGX Sensor Tech. And when you look at its data sheet, you can notice that it has a pretty non-linear characteristic. Uh, it also is suited uh, for the always-on operation and it's quite energy hungry, requiring uh, about uh, 90 milliwatts of constant power uh, heating. And uh, on the other side, if you look at uh, the transient sensor response uh, after the sensor uh, power on, you can see that it's uh, quite uh, longish, about uh, hundreds of seconds or something, and that it depends on some uh, different uh, uh, outside factors such as the concentration of the gas you're sensing itself. So we would like to take such a device and uh, see if we can uh, uh, apply it in a scenario of the on-demand sensing, which translates in case of such an energy-hungry uh, MOX sensor uh, to the operation with the intermittent heating. So we would be having a period Therefore, the reasons of power conservation and heating would be turned off, and then when the sensor is needed on demand, we would sw switch it on and see uh, 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 how to uh, obtain the readings which are uh, stable and sensitive to the gas concentrations which we would like to be sen sensing. So this problem has been broken down basically uh, onto sub-problems. Uh, first is uh, obtaining repeatable readout after the arbitrary length of the off time uh, prior to the heating and the second would be uh, the repeatability of the successive readings 
So in terms of the uh, setting up the experiments, uh, the second one it's, is probably uh, chronologically the first uh, which, which would you do and it's easier to, uh, to evaluate. So this talk will be completely focused on this one and the first one will be linked for some other occasion. So our, our approach was that uh, after the power on of the sensor, we would apply a pulsed heating uh, uh, pattern to the heater because the pulse heating would uh, allow us to uh, lower the uh, active uh, power consumption, consumption. And what we do in this article is uh, perform the optimization or better to say characterization of the pulsed heating pattern uh, such that it produces a stable sensor response. So, uh, uh, in terms of the heating parameters and the energy consumed for heating. So, now to the experiment. So, what was the experimental protocol, how it looked like? Uh, it looked like uh, that we exposed the sensor uh, to the different uh, heating sequences. Each of the heating sequences consists Consisted of a, a fixed fixed pause of uh, 30 seconds, which uh, from some of our previous researches uh, enabled the sensor to uh, uh, cool down. And after that, it was followed uh, by a series of uh, 20 pulses, uh, for which we varied uh, the uh, uh, pulse period. Here it is called P. Then the heating and the cooling phase inside each pulse, uh, which determine the duty cycle of heating, which is called D in the paper. Uh, and uh, repeated uh, this uh, uh, for a number of uh, uh, low concentrations, uh, ranging from the eight, from the zero to ten ppm. So in the end, we ended up uh, with the parameter. Of uh, 1000 points, pairs of uh, heating, uh, uh, heating period T, duty cycle D, concentration C, and uh, district time E. So, what we measured at each of such a heating pulses, the sensing layer's resistance, uh, the two, two resistances. First was uh, the minimum resistance uh, during the and uh, the second was the terminal resistance at the end of the heating pulse pH. So in order to conduct the, uh, we had to do some, uh, some some instrumentation. So we've got our sensor here in the middle. We need to build build the heating circuit and the readout circuit, the sensing circuit. So uh, heating control was implemented. Using uh, a power regulated heating, heating as stated in the sensors, sensors data set. Uh, we did the power regulation using a PID power regulator which is in uh, lab view and uh, which actuated uh, a step up uh, DC DC, uh, which at its uh, output produces a arbitrary constant current, which then in turn with the regulator, of course, produces the constant power at the, at the heater part. Uh, we did the signal acquisition uh, by measuring the resistance using the uh, digital acquisition card 6211. And uh, in the Fancy laboratory equipment for the gas sensing, like the uh, gas uh, mixturing device, etc. So we uh, what we basically needed uh, is a set which would enable us uh, the arbitrarily and constant uh, carbon monoxide concentration for a longer time period. So what we did, uh, we made the uh, airtight about 17 decimeters in diameter uh, in, in, in a volume which is shown here which uh, we replaced our, our sensors and the heaters 
uh, inside the uh, Jagger calibration ampules producing uh, containing 100 ppm uh, dilution of uh, carbon monoxide at 3 decimeters uh, cubic, which in turn pr uh, produced for us about 18 ppm at our given volume. Uh, and uh, we could uh, arbitrarily dilute this concentration by using our gas evacuation fan. Um, some reference instruments, we, we used two of them. Uh, one was the Draeger carbon monoxide detector, and the other was the calibrated alpha sensor. Uh, electrochemical sensor. Uh, uh, by using this setup, uh, we collected uh, some results and we analyzed. Uh, uh, so, for each of those heating sequences, which I've shown on one of the slides, uh, we analyzed first the response stability. Uh, and the expenditure applied at the stable state. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, we wanted to see how the variables which we measured, the, the terminal and the minimum resistance for each heating, uh, is, uh, uh, relates to the sensitivity of the, of the sensor. So here, here you can see a single example of, of a single he heating sequence with a single choice of the heating parameters, concentration, uh, uh, heating period, uh, heating duty cycle. And here you can see what happens to the to the uh, terminal and to the minimum resistance and how they uh, how they converge uh, to a quasi stationary uh, value. So by examining uh, such uh, such series uh, for all combinations of the of the heating parameters, we obtained uh, uh, the response stability in terms of the number of the pulses for a, a heating sequence which produces a stable output here here you can see the plots uh, with the uh, results uh, telling that we need about two to six heating pulses uh, when you uh, take that and uh, calculate the energy which is expended which which is used uh, for uh, such number of pulses you can get this plot and it can be seen uh, that we, we can construct a uh, readout sequence uh, consuming uh, less than 300 millijoules for a stable readout. And if you take uh, and if you look at the same results in a bit of a different way, uh, uh, in, in a way that you uh, uh, that, that you compare only the only the expended energy uh, to the uh, to, to the uh, readout value without uh, examining the uh, the duty cycle and the uh, uh, duration of the of, of each heating pulse uh, you can see a, a law here stating that you need to uh, cross a minimum uh, energy barrier of about 200 uh, millijoules in order to get a stable response so when uh, sensitivity uh, examined through the terminal resistance, you can see that uh, it uh, goes nicely with the concentrations and that, that for a, a wide uh, area of uh, duty cycle is uh, heating uh, stable reading and uh, nice almost linear sensitivity from 2 to 10 uh, ppm's of carbon monoxide, a uh, bit higher variability when you when you when you reach uh, the concentrations below and when, when you reach the concentrations below. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, we also examined the, uh, the the minimum resistance, and uh, it shows uh, two uh, distinctive behaviors. One is similar to the Terminal resistance, so nice, a uh, ni nice and linear slope uh, from 2 ppm above, and the other is the invariance of the concentration exhibited for uh, high heating periods and low duty cycle. Uh, we 
characterize the successor. Uh, we can, uh, we can uh, then show the response uh, with uh, about two to six uh, heat impulses depending on the, on the parameters. Uh, that uh, this is able uh, uh, with uh, about 200 to 300 uh, millijoules, and the response uh, can be linear uh, for the range of 2 to 10 uh, ppms. So this brings us uh, to, our, uh, to, to constructing the tensor force tensor uh, side. Uh, and it works with of the duration of the off time. Thank you.